Good evening. How you doing? My name is uh, Doc Tucker, and I was wanted to have a little small Bible study today, and it's going to the name of this Bible study that I think it would be uh, called if it's going to be given a name, work or support. You know, we have a lot of things that we do, and a lot of things that we go on in life, and we see. I see a lot of people that has ministries and different things where going on, whether it may be a food ministry or, or like myself, I have a Bible ministry and, you know, different things that I do myself in, 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 in my ministry. But I see a lot of stuff going on with other folks and, and even with God's people. You know, there's God's chosen people, God's elect. You know, you know, when I was talking to a friend of mine, I've been talking to a couple of pastors of mine, matter of fact, about what do they think about excuse me, about certain ministries and certain things that they do, you know, for the kingdom, whether, you know, for the for the hungry, the homeless, the sick, the lame, the afflicted, or the shut in, you know, just different ministries that we, that, that different people have. And, you know, so many times we want to give more to those that need, but we might think just by giving may be only comes from a sense of money, you know. And a lot of times, not just giving money, but sometimes, you know, just giving your time or just a physical help or, you know, just even something mental, you know, would do. But if you would go with me into the book of Exodus, Exodus 17 and 12, right now, and, 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 it's, and, and this is something that, that made me think about, you know, supporting people. You know, this is, and this, and this thing here, the support and work, it's, it's, it's different things, uh, uh, different kinds of support that, that I want to speak with you about today. So, if you would go with me into the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verse 12, and it says that, and it says that, but Moses, Moses' hands became heavy, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, and Aaron and her supported his hands, one on one side and and on the other, on and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Now, in that situation they was in battle with Amalek. And um and what they were doing was Moses has had his hands up with his staff up. But every time he raised his hands but and, and they were winning. But when he had, but but when he put his hands down to his side, then they started losing. So he had he had his hands up for so long till what Aaron had to get on one side and her had to get on the other side, and he had to help help hold his hands up until the battle until they had until they had won the battle. Amen. Now, in that sense, even in the church. Even in even in helping someone that's sick or not even or even the elderly, sometimes we help an elderly person up or they can't stand and we hold them up, you know, put our arm around them and keep them from falling or whatever's going on. And I know that we have all done it. I know that we've I've done it, you know. Uh, even in and in, in, that's what I'm saying to you is there is all kinds of support that 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 we need. And, and, and their support, when Hur was on one side and Aaron was on the other side, they supported Moses because his hands, evidently his hands was up all day. They said until the sun went down. So, wow, are you willing to support somebody like that? In that sense, are you willing to give everything you got? Are you willing to stand beside a brother or a sister in Christ and hold them up, you know, for the victory? And that's something that we need to think about. Because we, again, we, the focus is always sometime on us, and we want everything to be focused on us. So I'm, I'm asking you, are you willing, brothers and sisters, to support someone? Not pointing the finger, but it's something to think about. Because I've had to think about it myself at times. Or what would I do for another person? You know, would I catch a person by the arm, or would I hold them up? Whatever they need me to be, would I do it? But then, if you go with me into the book of Deuteronomy, 15 and 11, and this is basically, a, this is a command. Deuteronomy 15 and 11, 
And it says, therefore, the poor will never cease from the land. Therefore, I command you, saying, you shall open your hand wide to your brother, to your poor, to your needy in your land. Are you willing to support somebody in need? Now, this is a, this is a different kind of support because you got people standing out there on the side of the road. You know, you don't know if they're hungry or, or homeless or needy. You don't know that. You know, but are you willing to support them? You know, if you got an extra two or three dollars in your pocket and you're not doing nothing with it, are you willing to give? Because some people will tell you, man, I, I ain't mad. Them folks probably live in a bigger house than me. That's not the point. The point is, would you support them? If the shoe was on the other foot, would you support them? What if you were standing out there with a sign saying you're hungry? You know, I live in, I live in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and I see people all the time around here and they, and they, and they, and they say that they're hungry or you know they, they're trying to raise money for a certain situation uh, 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 man I'm to my would you support them would, would you support them but I want to tell you about a situation that happened to me I was going to Vans and as I exited I was, I, as I was getting off the interstate over there when you go to Brookwood and Vans and I was going to the truck stop over there, Shell's truck stop, you know, out that way. And, and I made the left. And now there was a guy at the stop sign. And he said, man, can you give me a couple of dollars to where I can go get me something to eat? And I handed him a couple of dollars, maybe five dollars. And he left walking. And I was still sitting there because it was, it was a crowd of cars. So when it was my time to come to the stop sign, I pulled up at the stop sign, and this gentleman was halfway across the bridge. Now, I had to pass him in order to get to the truck stop. So as I was going, I passed him. I got to stop. You know, I was at the stop sign. I made the left, and I passed him. He threw his hands up. Do you know that when I got across that bridge, I just had to look through my rear view mirror. I didn't see him at all, and he was halfway across the bridge. You never know who you may be entertaining. You never know if it's an angel. You know, sometimes we go through certain kind of tests. God put us through tests sometimes to see how our heart is. You know, to, to show you different things. But when I was driving, I just had to just look through my rear mirror, and I didn't see him. And I went to the truck stop, went all went back around the truck, came back out, and didn't see him anywhere. People, I'm here to tell you, you know, what, what, are, what, are, what are you willing to do? You know, when you get to heaven, is God going to say, well, I sit one of mine down to see what you do this and you didn't do it? Will, will God or, or will the Lord ever be able to say that to you? Amen. What, you know, I'm talking about these things have happened in my life. But then in, in that situation, but then he said, the poor would never cease. You know, are you willing to, to, to help a brother, you know, when he, or a sister, when they, when they children is, is, is not don't have the food or the clothes or or even when they going as far as being homeless in the street or even if they light bill need to be paid and they just going through a struggle in their life are you willing to help them? are you willing to are you willing to support that person are you willing to even if they are poor you know because we got a lot of us are doing a lot better than other folks you got people out here that may get a, a, a disability check and they might only just have enough to pay they rent. Are you willing to support somebody that doesn't have any the money to pay their light bill? Have you ever gave to a person at a grocery store? Uh, if an elderly person may be in front of you, have you ever bought their groceries before? Hmm. Man, I've, I've done it. I've managed that. And, 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 uh, and, and, and God gets the glory. Thank God you. gets the glory. That, but see, that's what I'm saying to you. Have you ever, have you ever done it? Have, 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 have you ever reached out there? And God forbid that you ever close your hand to anybody that's in need. God forbid. You know, that's it. And it, it's either going to be work or it's going to be support. If you can go with me into the book of Matthew. If you can go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 10. Starting at verse 8. And it says that, and, it, and, and also it says that, and uh, he says it in verse 8, he said, Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. 
free, freely you have to have received, freely give. You know, so we say again, have you freely give? You know, do you have things going on that God have blessed you spiritually or made you mighty in, in, in casting out demons or, or praying for folks or, or just working and he made you mighty? Have you given it freely? Because there are some of us that are prayer warriors that can man pray and God ask them just like that. Amen. There are some of us that can lay hands on you and the Holy Spirit goes to work and heal that person. It's all kind of ways God has his elect people, our strong people. Amen. Have you have you helped somebody? Have you supported somebody that needed that help? Have you put that work in? Hmm. You know, a person call you tomorrow and say, hey, he'll call you to call you right now and say, say, I need prayer. You know, my my mama's in the hospital. I'm not feeling good. Would you come lay hands on me? Or my child is sick and something's wrong with them and they're acting funny or whatever. And this and that. You know, a lot of times when a person have seizures or things going on in their life or some kind of sickness, I found that if you lay your hands on them, some people can lay their hands on you and it's gone just like that. Amen. Have you, are you able, have, have you ever put the work in? Have you ever supported somebody? Have you ever put the work in? Have you ever put the work in? To help somebody? Have you ever put the work in to help somebody? Man, this is going to be help. Is it, it, going to be support? Or is it going to be work? Do you, do, do you support God's elect? Or do you support the needy, the poor, the widows, and the orphan? Or do you work? Or what, what kind of work are you putting in today? Now, I'm not talking to you about what Doc Tucker thinks. I'm saying to you what the Word of God saying, and I'm bagging it up with Scripture, but... If you don't mind, bear with me because I won't be long. If you can go with me to the book of John right now. If you can go with me to the book of John 6 and 27. 6 and 27. 6 and 27. And it says that in John 6 and 27, it says, Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food, but for the food, endures to everlasting life which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set has set his seal on, on him. You know I tell people and I say it all the time I say it all the time man we 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 have to do what we have to do. We have to you know don't labor for food. I'm laboring for I'm not laboring for something that, that might go wrong. Well, my son might get mold on it, or some might, some might, you know, that'll spoil. Are you laboring for the right kind of food? Are you laboring with the right kind of food? Are you talking to people about the word of God? Are you talking about? Are you are you talking to people? Are you see this is this is this the part where it comes in the work? Are you talking to the people? About Jesus Christ. Are you talking about that kind of food that don't perish? Are you talking about? Are you talking to everlasting life? And he said, the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has said it. Man, what are you doing? Are you putting in the work? Are you putting in the work? Is this going to be support? Or is this going to be work? You know, and that's, and, 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 uh, that's what it is. Today, right now, you know, I sit back a lot of times and think, how can I help somebody do something? You know, Father God, if it's something that I need to do, Father God, send me, uh, uh, send me somebody, Father God. And I remember saying this, and I was telling my, I was telling my lady, I was telling my lady friend about, it. well, she was here when a lady called about two days ago, and she was talking about a guy that was over there across seas on what he did, and certain things happened. But at the same time, I've been praying for God to send me certain people, and certain people, they hit me on my Facebook page, and they, they inbox me and they ask me to pray and I, and I pray with them. Some people call me and I pray. I put the work in. Are you putting in the work? If you see anybody that that's in need, are you are you are you are you supporting them? What are you doing in this day and time? If you can go with me into the book of 1 Corinthians 15 and 8, can you go with me to 1 Corinthians 15 and 8? Like I said, I'm 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 not gonna 50, 15 and 58, I'm not going to take too much time. I'm not going to take too much of your time. But, but I need to get it across. 
And it says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? You know, put the work in. You know, whether it's in the ministry, supporting someone else's ministry, or just, you know, your work won't be in vain. Your labor will not be in vain. Put the work in. Support another brother. Because we got a lot of us that we get jealous sometimes because somebody, you might have a brother that you've been right here, he's been right here with you the whole time. But he might go to doing something different. He might have went to stepping out different, or she might have went to stepping out. And they, and, and, and they go to move in a certain way. And they go not really so much getting more recognition than you, but they're doing something different than you. Some of us get jealous of one another. Some of us are trained not to even go and help another person in their ministry. Some of us are not, won't even go. If, if the, when the Lord gives me my church, when the Lord our God gives me my church, yes, I would love to go sit in and own other person, people's churches. I don't have to sit in the pulpit. I can sit right down there with everybody else. I don't have people. I don't have to have people to look at me to know who I am because I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. By grace through Hallelujah. faith in Jesus Thank Christ, Jesus. I Amen. don't need for people to. Yes. People Hallelujah. can feel the way they want to feel about me. Amen. But you got a lot of us won't even yes. support a person in their ministry. You know, if a person need to, if you need to go to the mall and pass out flyers, pass out flyers. If you need to go pass out flyers, whatever you need to do. Stop looking at yourself. You know what I'm saying? Because in the last day, you would have to give an account of what you're supposed to be doing. Amen. You're going to have to give an account. I'd rather be out here doing the work. You know, and if some of us don't know what we're supposed to be doing in the work, ask the Father. Father God, where do you need me at? What is my calling? What do I need to do? I don't want to be left behind. Ask him. Lord our God, he listening. So that's what I'm saying. What are we doing today? Are we supporting a person's ministry? Are we help, helping? Or are we working in the ministry? Or are we working our ministry? Because it, 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 it's, it's wrong for people to support your ministry, but you sitting around like, well, you know, I'll let them go ahead. And, and they have a ministry, and you don't want to support their ministry. You don't do that. That's something you don't do. Amen. Word of God said, love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind. Somebody said, strength. But love thy neighbor as thyself. You know, I'm, I'm one of God's elect. I get, I'm telling you, I get out there, and if you call me, I'm going to pass out flies. We walk around at the mall. We go out in the street. We go to the restaurant, wherever you need to go. But if you call me and I tell you, well, I'm, I'm busy, or, you know, we always got something to do. But then I'm calling you and you study coming. But then when it comes time for, for me to do something for you, then you don't, and then I don't do it. Man, that's wrong. But one day I will give an account of it though. And yeah, you better know it. You either working, you either putting in work, or you either supporting somebody. We all need Jesus. We all need help. We all need help in this situation. You know what I'm saying? Never, that's why I was saying in the last scripture, never close your hand to nobody that needs some help or never see support. Whether they're in the ministry or whether they want to the needy, the poor, the widows, or the orphans. Man, the Bible tells you about that. Where do your support lies? Where do your work lies? And that's all I'm saying to you. And it's not beating nobody over the head. It's not saying anything. It's just being truthful. Because I have to examine myself. I have to examine Dr. Tucker all the time. When I got a brother call me and say, man, I need you to come teach a Bible class, I'm there. Unless something happened or somebody gets to me when I can't go, then I'm there. I had a sister call me and say, Doc, I need you to come to a, a, a Bible teaching and I need you to read a few scriptures and I need you to do you no know, do to work. And and then what so happened was I was just I'm engaged I had I had another engagement where I have to be at. So in this sense, God blessed me because in that same situation, that same person, I told us I couldn't do it. She sent me another text today saying that they had to go to a funeral and that they had been moved. So I feel like that that's where I need to be. Amen. So how much work are you gonna put in? When God calls you to it, you know, if he calls you to it, he'll see you through it. What are you willing to do? Mm -hmm. You know, will you close your hands to a person in need or, or need some support? 
Or would you open up your heart and open up your hands? Or would you go as far as opening up your house to your brothers and sisters, you know? Especially, you know? And see, in, in, in that situation. But then, if you can go with me to the book of Romans 12 and 11. Go with me to the book of Romans 12 and 11, please. 12 and 11. Romans 12 and 11. Romans 12 and 11. Romans 12 and 11. Boy, I tell you, God is so good to me. Amen. God is so, man, God is wonderful to me. And in 12 and 11, and it says that, uh, not lacking in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Man, we talking about, man, we, I'm to my diligence. Diligence is, is needed, you know, for Christian people. You know, we, we have to have that diligence. You know, and not to be like for us, your support, you know, even even in Christians should never offer their service half-hearted. We should never go to somebody needs your help. We should never offer half our stuff. I don't care what you say because I got to go over here, I got to do that. I got no, you you give it. You know, if the shoe was on the other foot, my brothers and my sisters. So we have to be at a situation, never hard-hearted, hard half-hearted, or even lazy. Some people ain't, ain't, won't, we won't even do nothing. They just like, well, I'm busy, and they lay right there watching TV, and they ain't did nothing for you. But then when God comes in our life, or when we have to have something done, we always want God to show up in our life. Are you, are you, are, are you, you know, diligence. Diligence is needed in whatever that we're doing. And I got to read it again. Can I read it again? I got to read it again. I got to read it again. And it says, not lacking in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. We talking about upbeat. We talking about getting. We talking about getting. We talking about that diligence of going. You know, we have to be going like Paul ran the race. Like I ain't talked about running the race. We have to be, we have to be moving. We have to be doing what we got to do. You know, whether it be for helping somebody or putting in the work. We have to, we have to have the diligence to go. We have to continue to pray to God to give us the strength to run the race that we that is set before us. Everybody's not the same. Everybody has a different race to run. Everybody has a certain amount of work, a certain work that they got to do. We are, we are, all of us are part of the body. You belong to God, you're part of the body of Christ. Some of us are over here, some of us are over here, some of us in different parts. We're not doing the same thing. You know? But then we have to have that diligence. Do we have enough diligence to put in the work? Do we have enough diligence to support? But if you go with me to the book of Titus, chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 14, Titus 3 and 14, and, and, he, and uh, he says that, and he says that, hmm, and let our people also learn to maintain good works to meet urgent needs that may not be unfruitful. You know, in that situation, in, in chapter 3, uh, Paul was writing a letter in Titus chapter 3 and 14. Paul was writing a letter. He was waiting for the, for the Cretans to do a good work and to, and to meet urgent needs and demonstrating their faith in good works, you know, and meeting everyone needs, you know. So if Paul was, if, if Paul is writing a letter and he's saying this to the Cretans, you know, we all have to do a good work. Tree said that the, the word of God said, tree is known by the fruit that he bears. What fruit are you bearing? You know, what are you doing? Are you supporting? Or are you knowing that a brother or sister in need and, 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 and we have an excuse about whatever we going on? Or you see a work that another brother or sister needs some work in. You know, in the Bible, we sometimes we think that because it happened in the Bible, that it happened 2,000, 4,000 years ago, but it's not pertaining to me, you know, but it is. Nothing under the sun. And in the book, please, that said, nothing under the sun is new. We have to continue. Amen. We have to continue to go and move forward in what we have to do, even to help certain people in different ministries that, I had a brother call me and he said, well, brother, doc, I need you to help me do this. 
you know, I need you to help me do that. I'm going to be the best I can be. You know, and that's what I'm saying. It's called, and we're called to be fruitful. We are called to be fruitful in, in whatever we're doing in this situation. Whether it be, because I was with a sister one time. <coughs> I was with a sister, uh, Stavetta Temple Star. She called me. She said, Brother Doc, I need your help. I said, sister, what we got going on? She said, I'm about to, she said, I'm getting ready to take it to the streets. I said, what are we taking it to? And she started laughing. She said, well, we're going over here to the food. Over here, we're going to the food bank. Over here on the south side. I guess the salvation, I'm somewhere over there to distribute Bibles and where they give hot meals. And man, I was there. I was there. I'm telling you, we outside praying. We inside praying. We distributing Bibles. That sister was looking at me. I looked at her, man, and we went and we did that thing. You know, and, and 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 we went and did that. I have I'm talking about, and I and, and I have been teaching a Bible class at uh at the New Experience Christian Church. You know, Pastor Eric Jackson. He said, "Brother, I, I I need you to come in, and I need you to teach Bible class." You know, on Thursday nights at six o'clock from six to seven. And I and man, I had well, I'm talking about it. We just like I almost had to go to Academy Sports and get me a brand new pair of tennis because I was running so fast. Right when he told me that, I went to run. Excited. Amen. Are you putting in the work? I got a my 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 lady friend, Pastor Akila Adams. She said, she said, Doc, I need you here. I'm there. Wherever she may need me, I'm there. You know, we have to support each other ministry. Whatever, whatever's going on. Whatever's going on. She's getting ready to go down to uh Butler, Alabama to preach the word, to preach the word. Down there at the Ark, uh, it's, it's a community center type deal, but it's going to be jam-packed. Wish you come to Butler and be there because it's a very powerful word. My lady friend, she does extremely well. She is. And you know, and, and that's what I'm saying. Supporting each other ministry. Doing what we have to do. You know, taking it to the streets. We, I, have, I go to a Bible study at Chick-fil-A on Wednesday mornings at 8 o'clock. And a group of us be there. You know, to and, and then we go to the streets. We figure out ways to how we can go to the streets and what we need to do. And we sit there and we talk about scriptures in different situations, you know, in that kind of situation. You know, where your calling is. Where your calling is. On Tuesday, on Tuesday from, from 9 15 to 10 o'clock at the thrift store, employee thrift store, I teach a Bible class. You know, where your calling is. Is it, are you working or, or, is, or, is it, or, or are you in a form of support? Are you supporting anybody? That's what I'm saying to you. Are you supporting anybody? Are you supporting your ministry? Is people supporting your ministry? Because a lot of times we need to get up. We don't need to be lazy. I'm not calling you lazy. We don't need to be lazy in nothing that we're doing for the Lord. Amen. Because if something go down, you know, his word said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things shall be added to you. But then he said it in his word, Hebrews 13 and 5. He said, I never leave you nor forsake you. So that means that we should never be slack in handling his business. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Now, if we can go to the book of Ecclesiastes 5 and 18, if you just go with me. Now, we won't, I won't be long. I'm almost through. Just bow with me. Just bow with me. I ain't, I ain't going to be in here all night. I ain't going to. We ain't going to be here all night long, but I'm going to take you. But then when, but when I get through, I want you to understand where I'm coming from. It's Ecclesiastes 5 and 18. And 5 and 18, it says, Here is what I have seen. It is good and fitting for one to eat and drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor in which he toils under the sun all the days of his life which God gives him. For it is his heritage. It's my heritage. Not just working for whatever company that I'm working for. You know, it's, it's, this is my heritage. This is my true heritage. You know, we get out, we get out and we work. And we work hard for the man, a physical man, that man that we can see harder than we work for God. So this is my hair. This this is me. This is my. I work for. This is my hair. This is what. This is what I do every day. This is what I do every single day, man. And I thank God for Jesus. You know. And, and hair. This is my. This is me. <clears throat> Working in my ministry, and at that being the best. Not saying anything. 
You know, God is taking care of me. God is taking care of me. You know, working in our ministries, you know, some people think that, you know, heritage can mean so many things. <clears throat> Excuse me. But working in my heritage, this is my heritage. This is my, this is, this, this is, this is, this is something that, when you look at me, you see Doc Tucker. When, when you see the ministry, that's how I want you to see. That, that's how everything needs to be. This is, this, is, this is my heritage. When I am working in the ministry, I am at my best. You know, not saying anything can't happen, you know. But I am at my best working in the ministry. God is seeing about Doc Tucker. God, God is seeing about Doc Tucker. Amen. Is he seeing about you? Are you working enough to where he's 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 looking at you? He's 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 bragging on you. You know, he's saying like, "Wow, now, like he did Job. Have you noticed? Have you looked at my servant Doc Tucker or my servant, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Is he bragging about you? If, if you're putting in enough work or if you're supporting enough people, is God proud of you? Do you? Do you do or do or you feel like if anything going on in your life to where you say, well, okay, you know, and you're not prideful. And you're not prideful, but she's like, mm. you know, do you tell God that you love him? You say, Father God, I love you. Riding down the road, well, ain't nobody looking. Amen. Or just in the house. I do it in front of my son. I do it. Father God, I love you. I'm doing it now. I wake up in the, I wake up in day four in the morning, thank God for Jesus. You know. And we have a thing to where, you know, what are we doing? Because I know Doc Tucker trying to get it right. I'm not saying I'm doing everything right. But 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 Doc Tucker putting in some work. Doc Tucker trying to trying to support. You know, Doc Tucker, I'm out there trying to, I'm out there, I'm out there and, and, and I'm gonna put out a flyer. I'm going to do everything I can to support people. I'm gonna even gonna get out there and do the work. You know, Pastor Keela Adams getting ready to do something on May the 14th. Uh, she's going to have some free hot dogs and some snacks and things. We're going to do some praying. We're going to do some crying if we have to. We're going to be doing some delivering stuff. We're going to be running, reading scripture. If you need to know something, come out there. It's going to be out there at Snow Hen Park. This, 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 we talking about putting it to work. We talking about me going to support her, and she is supporting me right now. You can't see her right now, but she's supporting me. Amen. 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 But like I like I like I tell you, there's a lot of things going on. Whether it's support or whether it's work. But if you want, but would you please go with me? I I won't be long in the book of in the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 4. If if you if if you can just hang out with me just for a minute. Just for a few moments, and then I'll be through. You know, and and one thing that we have to realize that I have to tell you, that when you work in your own ministry, because I, I almost fell into something. I almost fell into something. And sometimes that when, and, and, and when I read it to you, you're going to know where I come from. You're going to know what I mean. He who has a slack hands become poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Hmm. Mm. I sat in my apartment, and I was thinking to myself, I said, Lord, my you know, I had a transportation thing happen. I couldn't get around. So I, I got on Facebook and started typing, putting scripture. I started texting everybody else because I couldn't get out where I need to get out. And God started placing people in front of me. And I'd start praying for them. And they start praying for me. Had somebody call me. Remember when I just said I had transportation problems, right? I had an uncle call me on the phone. and said, well, Doc, come get this car. Gave me a car. So what can I say to the Lord? Oh, well, I, I said, Lord, I ain't got no way to get around. Uh-uh, Lord, uh-uh, it's time to go to work. Amen. Yeah, you know, uh-uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting around, I'm like, Lord, I, you know, how can you want me? I said, Lord, how can I get around? You, do you want me? I, Lord, how can I get from over there to over there? And I had an uncle call me on the phone. He said, he said, Doc, he said, what you doing? And his name is, and his name is, Minister Johnny Tucker, he called me. He said, uh, come get this car. And I said, excuse me? He said, come get this car. I said, okay, uncle. I started laughing. I said, thank you, Lord. I said, I'll be there in a minute. And been driving it ever since. Saying that to say that sometimes the devil attack your transportation. 
He attacked people. Just because a person said that I belong to God don't mean that they ain't under attack from the devil because we all under attack. That's right. Amen. The ones that the devil don't attack is the ones he already have. That's it. And it always seems like they always have just more than you do or doing <laughs> way a lot better than you. But when my uncle called me, he said, come get this car. I felt in my spirit when God said it's time. So I couldn't sit around anymore and say, well, I ain't got no transportation. I couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And my uncle gave me an 84 Chevrolet in power. You know what I'm saying? And man, I drive that car. I've had two or three times where the devil tried to attack that car. Man, and God had blessed me with the right people to help me do everything I need to do to keep that car, to, to get that car back running. And it's running right now today. I, I, I got to give God all the glory. Amen. But I can't, but see that's what I'm saying to you. I can't sit back and say that I don't have a way to get around because I complain to the Lord. I said, Lord, if you give me something, I'll go. <laughs> and it's sitting right outside, so I have no excuse. And man, I am so happy. I am so grateful. I am so thankful because if you, if I'll tell you what, you know, we can't put limits on God. But but if you're working for God, God is more definitely working for you. Amen. So, and, and, and then in that situation, but if you go with me, one more scripture, bear with me, one more scripture in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 12. 5 and 12. Praise the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Woo, I feel like I'm fit to be tired. Ain't that something? Praise God. Praise God. But then it says that, that the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. Man, I sleep so good at night now. I used to be up, boy, Amen. just, I used to be up, man, can't sleep at night. Walk around in the house. Can't do this. Boy, I can't sleep. Mm. Man, it's late. But boy, when I started working for the Lord, boy, I'm to my now, I could just sit down and go to sleep. I, I, I go back there and lay down and put what, two, three minutes? I'm gone. I'm asleep. I'm asleep. But before I was working for the Lord, man, I'd be up all night tossing and turning. Thinking about stuff I had no business thinking about. Most definitely that, that most definitely thinking about stuff I had no business thinking about. But then he said a laboring man. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet. Whether he eats little or much. Man, I'm to my, and, and I eat, and then, and I, you know, God is so good. Whether he eat little or much, he still sleeps good. He still still good. You got you got to get you got to get your rest when you're working in the ministry. Amen. When you're supporting people in the ministry, you have to be able to get your rest. Because if you don't get your rest, you'll get it. Whether you you'll start going different places and you might fall asleep over here, you might fall asleep over there. You know, you get your rest. But God taking care. God takes care of those people. Those that that that, that man that labor, or that woman that labor. I'm not gonna just put it all on man. Cause man ain't the only one out there working. You got some powerful sisters out there that's getting that, that they have, like Pastor Keila Adams, she has a, a mentoring ministry for women. You know, whether they've been abused or, or maybe sexually or, or, or however it may be, husband and wife fighting, whatever's going on, she does that. You know, she actually does that. And if you, and, and I'm going to post her flyer. I'm going to post a flyer in about 20 minutes on my Facebook page. And if anybody needs to talk with her, man, she's good. She loves God. God loves her and her ministry is growing. It's growing. I love her. Hey, glory to God. Praise God. You know, hey. And that's what I'm saying to you right now. You know, when, you, when you're doing the work of the Lord, man, the Lord, he takes care of you. Amen. He takes care. He, there's nothing. There's nothing that you can't do. And he says it anyway. He said, but the abundance of the rich will not permit him to sleep. A rich man, it's hard for a rich man to go to sleep. I know rich people. Man, they up all time with a night. <laughs> Worried about their money. Somebody trying to get their money. Oh, I might be scammed. I might be this. He trying to get me to he trying to get me to sell some swamp. He trying to get me to buy some swamp property over here in Arizona somewhere. But I need to say it to you again. He said, the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. And we are laboring for God. God's elect are laboring. If you go to working for the Lord, I guarantee you, if you ain't never had a good night's rest, I guarantee you when you go to worshiping the Lord, 
when you go to working for the Lord and you go to support the ones that, 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 that work for the Lord, watch how you sleep get well, watch how you get to sleep. Now, man, I've I've had so much good sleep. I've had some sleep. Boy, I woke up, boy, and just boy and just felt like I could have ran in a in, in a marathon. Sleep is good. God is good. Amen. You know, and sometimes, but today I got the action. Today I got the action. I, I got to, I got to, I got to get you there because God is touching my heart. To, you know, if you're watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day. Tomorrow is never promised to anybody. Don't let the enemy tell you nothing about that. You can wait till tomorrow to do this. You can wait till tomorrow to do that. Today is the day. Today is the day if you have never received or never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, I, I extend the invitation out to you. And if you're watching this video, if you can just please bow your head. If you can please bow your head. Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I believe you died for my sins right now. I turn from my sins and open the door of my heart and life. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving my life and making me the kind of person that you want me to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.